you've seen me before. Last year I was asking people buying them my idea of Arcade Oblivion 64. And we saw how far that went. So far nobody nobody even donated. And um, I got my own gripes with GoFundMe. I'm sure it's worked for other people with lesser causes. I'm trying to open a business. Not one donation. Very few people viewed it. And for the few people who did view it, didn't give me a penny. And I'm usually one to just outright say, fuck you. But I chose not to. Not this time. And normally, I would go ahead and turn this into just an audio podcast and post it up. And this has to now be posted up at the new account, Jovian Netcast, one word. And I I don't really want to start another account like that. To me, that's bullshit. And I had to. And I had to remove all the audio, because that's where Nintendo's actually going for. I've seen a few, like, Screamwave Media and um, one other Japanese company actually go after copyright holders via visual, and I might do that. And though I am putting copyright maybe a watermark or a bug I don't know how I really don't believe in the system anymore I don't know what it's like for other YouTubers but there are a handful where we're just sick and tired of getting flagged for copyright I can't speak for them I'm not speaking for them I don't represent them and if YouTube decides that my account is no good. Too fucking bad. Go ahead. Delete me. Delete my videos. I don't care anymore. You look at me. Look, look at my eyes. Specific. Heavy bags under my eyes. I shouldn't be stressed out. This is supposed to be an easy-to-do dream job. So, um, this is, yes, another um, joint video, but it's only being posted on uh, Grumpy Bear Plays, and it's not even allowed to be posted on Grumpy Bear Plays right now. Um, At least I know the reason... Even though I'm not allowed to do anything about it, I know the reason what caused the alleged copyright infringement. Um, Again, I read the copyright code, Title 17 of the USC. I just read it. And YouTube is breaking the law. Anybody who flags copyright the way they're doing is breaking the law. Now think about this. Many moons ago, the record companies were like, what do we do? We don't want people... um, We want them to buy the music, but we don't want them to control it. At first, Apple gave them DRM. But I bought songs off of Amazon. I bought songs off of Apple, especially recently, I have no DRM on anything. Um, I, I don't know about the videos. I, I'm, I don't share videos. I mean, I'm not talking about YouTube. I, I mean, like on... I don't burn a, a, a CD with video on it. You know, making a mixtape goes back to the record days. I mean, people had reel-to-reel tapes, and it was affordable and easy to use in mixtapes when finally asked Steve Jobs what they should do you know what he wrote? he said get rid of DRM, who cares 
And that, that's a company today that is the most profitable company this year, again, on Earth. Then they gave away their OS for free. I hear Microsoft's going to do something quasi to that. Um, in a weird way, Microsoft themselves kind of pissed on DRM by giving away, uh, although a lot of mediocre games, but a lot of good games for free for um, Xbox 360 live subscribers. But the can of worms was open with Nintendo. It was right then and there I noticed a shift in YouTube against people making game videos. If YouTube didn't want this, they should have stopped it eons ago. I've been watching game videos on YouTube as long as I can remember. Um, I used to watch AMV Hell on YouTube. Can't do that anymore. Have to download the AMV Hell episodes individually from AMVHell.com. Well, why is that? What? Why has that occurred? There's no reason for it. TV trope says in the '90s is when pop culture became the culture. Now we got a problem. And I'm advocating entire abolition of the copyright, trademark, and patent system in the United States. I feel this would clear up many, many courts, save taxpayers money by not having these courts operating and functioning, but also lead to prosperity unheard of that's unprecedented in world history. You know, the Chinese don't ask for royalties on a brick wall. The Egyptians didn't send an envoy to Central America to collect royalties on pyramids. If you're Mormon, you believe that a bunch of uh, Egyptian Jews went and built Central America. Genetics say they're related to the Chinese. You figure that out. But the book, Gutenberg didn't go and kill people for the printing press, the book, whatever, scrolls. Ideas need to flourish. Eli Whitney, the inventor of the cotton gin, he let the patent expire after 14 years, I think. Anyone can make a cotton gin. Productivity went up. Standard of living went up. The cotton gin, because it entered the public domain, led to the freeing of the slaves. Why? It required slaves to use the cotton gin by hand. Now, the cotton gin is a great invention. It removes the seeds and thorns and thistles from cotton. After the cotton has been harvested. But someone still manually has to go out, load it, clean it, so forth and so on. The slaves were doing that. And they weren't being compensated for their labor, they were slaves. Families like mine, in the 19th century, we were abolitionists. Before state rights, so Lincoln, in a way, we disagree with, but... We're for the rights of all men. We went in, started, you, you can see it. There, there's people with my last name who are part of the abolition movement and who are part of the Republican movement. Because the Whigs just wigged out. If the cotton gin hadn't entered the public domain, it would not have become rampant all over the South leading to the fraying of the slaves. There's a positive example. Is there anything positive about hacks like Funny Princess or Super Mario Brothers 3 Mix? 
What about when pirates make, you know, translating Samurai Showdown to the Famicom or the NES? Or that weird Pikachu game on the Mega Drive? I'll give you this one. Fleischer Studios, later to become famous studios, known to make Betty Boop, Popeye, and Superman. Back in the what's considered the golden age of animation. The Superman cartoons are in the public domain. Even if I were to upload a public domain version of that cartoon to YouTube, I would be flagged for copyright. But no copyright exists on that cartoon. Constitutionally, any copyright that was not renewed at the 14th year no longer exists. And any copyright that was not renewed, well, allowed to expire at the 28th year does not exist. It doesn't matter that the copyright code, Title 17 of the United States Code, has been altered. It was not amended in the Constitution. The copyright code has to be amended in the United States Constitution via ratification of 37 state legislatures in session. Um, well, the other way is a constitutional convention, which can lead to the rewriting of the whole Constitution. And that the problem is there's no, there's no quorum to call a limitation on the length that a constitutional convention can be called. And that itself has a whole slew of problems that I'm not going to get into because this is about copyright law. A lot of the copyright law is null and void under the United States Constitution because the United States Constitution has not been amended. Now you're thinking, well, what if the court, what if the Supreme Court rules me different? The Supreme Court ruling can also be appealed to the First District Court, First District Federal Court. And secondly, the Supreme Court in the Constitution is not allowed to rule constitutionality. Did you know that? Where in the Constitution does it say Supreme Court shall rule, or any court can rule on constitutionality of a provision, case, or concept? You won't find it because it's not there. There is, in the Constitution, there is no authorization for ruling something constitutional or unconstitutional. Because, in the separation of powers, the Supreme Court is not allowed to make law. It is allowed to interpret violations of law amongst parties or violations of financial harm amongst parties. If I was guilty, say in this case, uploading the Mad Scientist Superman cartoon, I would have to be first found guilty in a civil court of law of copyright infringement, willful and knowing. But if the work has already fallen in the public domain, as the Mad Scientist Superman short has, it doesn't matter if someone comes along and recopyrights it. It's already in the public domain and therefore not subject to copyright law. Well, if I put it up on YouTube, I know I will be flagged. It fits within the 15-minute limitation I've been unfairly given thanks to JVC of Japan. Well, that's redundant. It's, Jap it's Victor Company of Japan, JVC. But, well, fuck them. But how, how can YouTube sit there and do that? Well, they claim they're a private entity. The courts, including the Supreme Court, has ruled when a private space is open or a private service is open without charge to the public, it in itself, though is a private entity or property, is now subjected to the rules of public rule. Meaning YouTube has become a public forum. There is an Internet Archive where people can choose to upload things. An Internet Archive has, has fought on our behalf against 
Copyright. Internet Archive is one of the few entities that have said, no, we're not responding to a subpoena, F. David, or we're not coming up to testify. We're not giving you what you want. If it's there, publicly accessible, download it yourself. The Max Flesher cartoons of Superman are available well, at Internet Archive. It's in their, uh, what's it called, moving pictures, moving images, something like that. It's there. I've downloaded them, I've watched them. Now, let me get back to this argument about no having no copyright or trademarks or patents. I now have the Mad Scientist. I have downloaded the MPEG-2 version, the highest resolution version available from the Internet Archive. Its resolution and quality is of the source used. Well, let's say that source wa- was a, a videotape. Let's say a beta cam or a umatic, you know, or a dirty transfer on 16 millimeter film. I can clean it up all I can with what consumer programs I have, like iMovie or Final Cut Studio or or one of those lesser years behind programs uh, available on Windows or Unix, but. Is my stuff going to look as good as the um, Warner Brothers, where they may actually have the original struck or filmed assets? Which would you rather buy? You can get mine for free. And then you can go buy Warner Brothers version, which will be all cleaned up and look good. It might be worth the $30 on Blu-ray. I'm saying it is. I'm giving mine away for free, or, or at the most, I would charge a dollar. And that's exactly what companies were doing, like Digiview Entertainment. They were charging a dollar, and you would be going through Walmart. And they, if you remember how Walmart used to look, when they were still using the Sam Walton logo, there was the, the in the in front of the cash registers remember there was batteries and this and that one of the racks was full of one dollar DVDs most of these I think came from internet archive there's nothing wrong with Brentwood Entertainment it's another one that, that did this media entertainment you know the people who co financed um, a handful of Nightmare on Elm Street films with New Line Cinema. Media. I have a Superman tape from Media. I see these Superman tapes all the time at thrift stores. Meaning that these things sold, well, not for a dollar on tape, but sold for a certain amount. And that was, I don't know. I don't know how you want to say it, but it was good enough to justify some profit. So what I'm saying is that it's a way, there's many ways to obtain The Mad Scientist because it is the public domain film. It is not owned by DC Comics. It is not owned by Warner Brothers. It's not owned by Time Warner and it's not owned by America Online. It is in the public domain. It's not owned by Paramount, the releasing company. It's not owned by whoever the successor and in interest is to Famous or Flesher. It's not owned by Media. It's not owned by Digiview. It's not owned by Brentwood. I even saw these things air as filler on AMC. It's not owned by AMC or Rainbow Media Incorporated. No. It's it's free. It's part of our culture. The mad scientist is part of our culture. Now, when it's cleaned up, can someone claim ownership? Maybe. But let's take a look at this. Even if Gone with the Wind was public domain, which legally, constitutionally, it is, I can buy some dirty ass copy of it. I can download it myself if it was so freely available. I wouldn't get the bonuses. I wouldn't get 
a very slanted documentary on the Old South, New Th- South, I wouldn't get all the extras. I wouldn't get the documentary on how it was cleaned up, which was so interesting. Same goes for how the West was won. That's the kind of stuff they can add. So even if Bond films that are older than 28 years old were in the public domain, would you buy 20th Century Fox's version, authored professionally, jointly by Fox and MGM? Or would you settle for the public domain version, which is made from, for all you know, someone took a VHS tape of Dr. No, taped to DVD, and tried to clean it up with handbrake. Then they authored it with no menus, using Visual Hub. Then they had that as a source, sent that to the factory, and had those struck. And then they're selling them for a dollar at, at, at your local gas station. Netflix, Hulu, Crunchyroll, Crackle, Apple, Microsoft. They have shown in, in film, copyrights are useless. If the price is right people will buy things can be given away for free Microsoft gave away for free their documentary um, on the um, E.T. in the desert buried in the landfill I don't know I think it's called Game Over although Nerd's movie was better Um, Nerd himself gave away some of his movie you know What's the best publicity? Let me give you a little bit of this. Let me give you a little bit of that. Let me give you this crappy version so you might have some incentive later to buy a better version. There's someone out there who, who gets their jollies off, who, who jacks off when they, when they see bad public domain versions of films or pirated versions. Oh, I can't stand that someone sits in the theater and, and records a movie. Fuck that. I'll go to the theater. I'll wait till it comes out on TV or or a streaming video service, or I buy it. I own hundreds of Blu-rays. You can't see it, but where I'm pointing to, I own roughly about fifty said movies, and it looks to me about two hundred to three hundred laser discs. I, I own more than that on Blu-ray. I own thousands upon thousands of VHS and DVD movies, TV shows, anime, you name it. I don't like pirates either. I don't download ROMs. None of that. Um, well, I do tell people go get an EverDrive or something like that. At the same time, if you truly love something, you'll find a way to legitimately support it. I don't mean buying a used copy. I mean finding out if there's a new copy you can buy in a video. You show support that way. Someone asked, well, why do you own Super Mario Brothers? Well, let's see. Um, I bought it on Wii. I bought it on 3DS twice. No. Yeah, three times for three different 3DSs. And I bought it on Wii U. It's five times. Including having two original copies. That means one came with the NES and the other one was probably bought by mistake. On top of that, man, so... I'm a, I'm up to uh, I'm up to six. Then I have uh, I was bought new retail Super Mario Brothers, or, excuse me, Super Mario All Stars. So there's another copy of the game there. And also I bought um, twice in retail Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for Game Boy Color. So that puts me up to nine times I've bought this game. Oh, but I've also bought Super Mario All-Stars on its re-release on Wii, so that's ten times. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and I had the Game & Watch and the watch as a kid, so that's 
a dozen times I have bought Super Mario Brothers to the best of my memory. Oh no, 13 times. I actually bought I bought it new for the NES for somebody else to use on their NES. So, 13 times. Plus, I don't know how many times I have played up up to a few weeks ago versus Super Mario Brothers in in arcades. Whenever I see versus Super Mario Brothers, I've got to play. I've got to play. I got to beat the high score. I'm not leaving that arcade till I beat the high score. But now I'm being told by Nintendo I can't film my exploits on versus Super Mario Brothers. Even though I have plucked in thousands of dollars since 1986, I think. 85 or 86 for... No, it's 86, I think. Versus Super Mario Brothers. A lot of the money was plucked into the machine, even though it was tokens. The machine at... Um, at both arcades. There's the upstairs arcade at the Meadows Mall, and then... Aladdin's Castle, if you type in Growing Up in Sin City 81, he has a video of Aladdin's Arcade at the Meadows Mall, 1989. There's a Versus Super Mario Brothers machine that was tucked near the front entrance of that arcade. There was Pistol Pete's on Decatur and Alta. Now, I lived on Decatur in Washington, so it was um, a mile and a half to walk over there. Occasionally I did. Smith's. Um, there was a Smith that used to be on US 95, or back then it was called Fremont. And Jones, I also plucked in a lot of quarters into that one. There was one in Phoenix um, near Tiny Shoe Repair that used to be in the Phoenix area. I don't have the address for you, but there was one in a convenience store and one in a pizza parlor. Uh, there was one in a Dairy Queen that is um, near uh, Western High School. I used to pluck quarters in um, the one at the obviously the Pinball Hall of Fame. And a few other places, a, a, sh a cruise ship. I plucked quarters into that, or tokens. So I have played thousands upon thousands of dollars in, in quarters of versus Super Mario Brothers. So 13 copies bought, new, and no arcade machines. It's part of my life. Pathetic as that makes it. Versus Super Mario Brothers and many other arcade machines. Street Fighter 2, Samurai Showdown, Mortal Kombat 2, um, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter vs. X Men, Street Fighter vs. Marvel, um, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Street Fighter 3, and it just said 3 on the marquee. Lethal Enforcers, Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, uh, Virtua Fighter, Virtua Fighter 2, Virtua Fighter 3, Tekken, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, uh, let's see, as recently, uh, Tekken 5, Ridge Racer, Daytona USA, um, Cruisin' USA, Cruisin' Exotica, uh, Cruisin' World, it's backwards there, by the way. Frogger, uh, Space Invaders, uh, pin Pinball Machines, The Addams Family, uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, Monopoly. Recently, I've been playing the Monopoly pinball game. Um, Pinbot. There, there's a bar called Mad Maddie's on Sahara and Cimarron. It's a little off Cimarron because it's... It's next to a mini storage unit, which is next to a Wendy's, which is next to a bank. The bank is on Cimarron, across the street from a Lutheran church. But Mad Maddie's had a pinball, a pinbot game. I used to play that a lot. Um, there was an SNK game, um, like Street Brawl or something like that. I, I bought it on PSP because I used to play that at the 7-Eleven on Saharan Durango. Um, I used to pluck in money into a horse racing game that was at the uh, Charlie's Bar on uh, Saharan Durango also. And th this is in my 20s. Video games have always been a part of my life. I don't know life without video games, comic books, 
Saturday morning cartoons. Life sucks without Saturday morning cartoons. This is stuff that I consider familiar and healthy to me. All I'm trying to do is make some money playing video games. Should Is a person entitled to it? Absolutely they are. A video game is no different than a pen and paper. So if I buy Georgia Pacific made paper and a big pen and I write the great American novel should Bic and Georgia Pacific and whoever made the desk I wrote it on and, and the light bulb I used, should they get royalties? No. That's the argument right there for video games. And that's where Nintendo is fucking wrong. Yeah, I know. It's a half hour and I finally get to the point. What well, you should have listened to me until this half hour. And that's what I'm telling you. That's where Nintendo fucked up. That's where YouTube is fucking up. Video games are the tools. I can completely understand uploading movies. But doesn't that make Google a hypocrite on YouTube to flag movies and songs and albums and video games now? While at the same time, they were the same company that wanted to scan every published piece of written word so people can access them in their search. What do you think? They're hypocrites. That makes them liars by default. Now, it's ironic that this may actually get broken up, and and uh, so that would mean another episode um, of Grumpy Bear Plays that I have to break up. I don't want... This, is, this has nothing to do with the Jovian's netcast that is supposed to be hosted on Totally Paranoia, but it's not going to be until I figure out why. So it's going over... To Jovian's netcast, or if it does get hosted there, it too will be broken up. But you know, why do I have to break it up? You know, that actually adds extra work, and and it's telling me I'm not allowed to monetize anything or provide proof. Well, you know what? I'm going to provide proof here. What are you going to cite me for? The Pikmin poster, that that Zelda poster, the Donkey Kong poster, who made this grocery bag, the Turbo Booster, the Generation Next, the shirt I, I'm wearing. Who made the door, the paint, this microphone, the computer I'm using? Is that what you're going to cite me for, for copyright? Well, you know what? Fuck you, YouTube and Google. Look, oh, look, look, look. There's a Macintosh right behind me. Look at all this bottle of water I've been drinking. What about the barber who cuts my hair? Or the razor I use. You know that, that, that razor? Oh, you only need one razor. That, that thing hawked by one of those pawn stars. Uh-oh, I said pawn stars. You going to cite me for that? What about my voice? It's, it's been on a, uh, K, KPVT and KHMP and a few other TV and radio stations throughout time. You going to cite me on that, too? What about the, what about the public domain arcade ambience I'm using? Are you gonna cite me for that? No, seriously, get your fucking head out of your butts! You're breaking the law criminally. You're in criminal violation of both the United States Code, Title 17, and the United States Constitution. You're not giving us because you are a you have been ruled in precedent and in past cases which I cannot cite right now. I cannot cite cases because I am not a lawyer. I'm not part of the state bar of Nevada. But I cannot cite cases here due to legal reasons. Is that illegal? Hmm. I don't know. What does the state constitution say about who and who isn't an an attorney? in the state of Nevada, which is where I reside. You reside in the state of California. But where is the data going that I send you? A lot of times it says you, your servers are being rented from Amazon. Where, where are their servers? Washington State? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Try not to let me monetize this. What are you going to get me on? This is my own original creation. So, there you go. 
My hands are, are fucking tied. I'm, I'm tired of this shit. You know, I thought I stumbled upon, at least in my life, a good business idea. I am no longer an advocate. Fuck Nintendo. Fuck YouTube. Fuck Google. Fuck copyrights. Fuck trademark. Fuck patents. I don't. I don't know what the solution is, other than I, I put these things on fucking DVDs and put them down at the local coffee shop near UNLV or UCLA or UCSD, wherever. I just don't care anymore. You 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 you, you beat me down in my brain. I I, I don't want to fight anymore. But I, I guess I am fighting because I'm I'm recording this genuine emotional reaction with the best of my rationale here. I'm fighting for for people who won't even watch this video, who wouldn't give me a dime, who wouldn't help me out, nothing. I'm fighting for you assholes, whether you, whether you want me to or not. Yeah, and I just called you assholes. How do you feel about that, assholes? But... I... I just... I'm just gonna find a way to exist within these restrictions. And that's it. Because I... I'm not gonna do this. I have no financial gain. And uh, huh. should we talk about financial gain? Should 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 I get into that? You know that that that's for a different type of podcast. I apologize. I apologize because I have to subject you to this bullshit of mine. I gotta make end credits now. Well, in in a weird way, I have to make end credits. Um, I'm not a union show, so I don't have to follow anything but but copyright. But yeah, I gotta put in a copyright now, starting with this episode. This is not the season finale. I'm gonna try to make a Sega episode. But I'm telling you, all motivation and zeal is gone. I think I'll go work construction. You ever seen Office Space? That guy's got the right idea. Oh, I cited Office Space. Ooh, is 20th Century Fox going to come after me? 